Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us on this lovely but cold yet sunny <laughs> Wednesday um, afternoon in January. Uh, for those that have joined our previous videos, thank you for joining again. Those that are new, uh, thank you for you know being here today um, and Happy New Year, everyone. So. Today, as you see, that we'll be talking about creating a new plan for the new year uh, with our holistic nutritionist, Sean Hugh Wing. Uh, my name is Cassandra Francis, and I am the, the founder as well as one of the psychotherapists at One Piece Therapy. Uh, so please interact with us today. Um, it's nice to have a twist, not even a twist, it's nice to have an additional topic on health and not just talking about mental health. So physical health is also a crucial aspect um, to highlight. And I know the new year typically has everyone in the momentum to highlight what they wanna focus on. So if you have any questions, comments, even concerns, please feel free to use the chat for those that are live. Um, or if you're watching the recorded version, feel free to comment below in the comment section. And I'll hand it over to you, Sean. Well, as uh, Cassandra said, uh, hello and thank you for everyone for joining us today. Um, I'm going to be talking about creating a new plan for the new year. Um, it is, I would put it, a good place to begin with um, for all those people who are into their resolutions and maybe their resolutions haven't been hitting or they need a little tweaking. This is just something that you can add to um, uh, your toolbox. Uh, um, I'm a big proponent of giving tools to people and letting them try to use them the best way they see fit. Um, you can advance the slide. So how this new pl plan works. Um, so one thing that we need to know about the plan is it's gonna work with any diet you're on um, or any diet plan you're on. So if you're doing keto, if you're doing paleo, if you're doing Atkins, um, there's all these up each body, all these, uh, all these different diets out there. But this is a framework that will work with all of them. Um, also, I really want to stress that this is a flexible, flexible plan that's personalized to you and your lifestyle. What do I mean by that? I mean, if you are a parent who has kids and it's hard for you to figure out, you know, like, when am I going to get this meals in and when am I going to do, like, eat all this food and prepare it? This is kind of, this will help you kind of give you that, I hope to give you that framework and that uh, that um, advice on how that you can structure your, your plan so that it works with your lifestyle as well as helping you reach those resolutions that I know that many of us have uh, created. Uh, and lastly, this is gonna work whether you're trying to lose fat, whether you're trying to gain muscle or if you're just happy where you're at and you just kind of you know want to you're good with what you see in the mirror or, or how you feel the energy um both physically and mentally and you know you just want to stay where you're at this is you can use this plan as well okay so the first thing that i've always wanted to do when i create a plan is i want to start to identify a goal so as i said are you looking to put on muscle are you looking to shed extra fat or are you happy where your where your current um, body composition is? So the reason why I want to do this is because I want to put you in that framework to um, guarantee success, or to put you in that in that path of success. Um, I think a lot of us go to the gym, or not even if we're going to the gym, we're just whether whatever our fitness regime is or whatever our, our um, nutrition regime is, and we're like, um, I just want to lose weight. But it's more important to be really specific about what we're trying to achieve. Because when we're specific about what we're trying to achieve, it's easier for us to get there. It's, it's like, it's, it's, we need that goal. And having that goal to strive for, as opposed to something that's umbrella, makes it that much easier to um, not only get there, but when you kind of veer off the path. Because I know sometimes, I mean, let's be honest, we're not perfect. And there's going to be times where we, where we, where we stumble. But the idea is to get back up and to continue to that goal, right? So if I'm just saying, well, I want to kind of lose some weight, 
that's that's not enough that, that's not enough to motivate us to when we're when we're like you know what i've had a really stressful day uh work is on me um i have my kids on me whatever it is and you're like i'm just i'm just gonna not care about what i'm eating i'm just gonna eat whatever so it, the idea is that we really want to stress that the goal is intrinsically important to us succeeding right without the goal it's very hard for us to succeed on anything um it's, if you want to look at it this way if you wanted to buy a house you're not just going to say well i'm just going to save up some money to buy a house you typically need to know how much your budget is to buy a house even a car like you need to know what that goal is how much do i need to save is the same thing as the way you want to look at how much do i want to gain or lose or where am i at in my nutrition right so I'm also assuming mm -hmm. for the viewers information, would you also help guide someone to identify their goal? Because what if someone, they don't really know at the time of booking with you what they want, but they just know a change in their eating habits is needed. Like, do Definitely. You okay. So when I, when I meet with people, it's, it's, it's a very important meeting to, to, I mean, you're going to come to me with your goal and I'm going to look at your goal and I'm going to work with you to figure out, sorry, let me put this. You're gonna to come to me with, with a problem, an issue, right? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at that issue and I'm gonna figure out how we can create a goal out of it, I think is a better way of looking at it. So yes, if you wanna eat better, then we need to ask the, the whys. Why do we wanna eat better? Are we trying to eat better because we're afraid of you know, metabolic health conditions, like so like diabetes or cancer or, um, high blood pressure. Are we trying to eat better because we want to have more energy, right? Do we want to actually lose weight? Do we want to eat better to gain muscle? Like a lot of people, you, you might go to the gym and you see the pe person goes to the gym, or maybe you, you even of yourself, you go to the gym, but you don't really feel anything's changing, right? And there is a mental... I guess dopamine hit if you want to look at it when you go to in the gym and you actually see something improving right so improvement doesn't just happen in the mirror it happens when you're actually working on the machine so if you are um lifting weights and you've struggled and struggled and struggled to lift more than 25 pounds and then all of a sudden now you can lift 30 that is an improvement right and these are the these are little steps right so it's really building foundation that we're trying to that we're trying to create by creating a goal. Thank you. Yeah, definitely. So step one, um, you want to track your habits. So I know this is probably this is probably the the step that people really don't like the most, and I'll explain the reason why we're going to do the things we need to do. So over the next two three weeks, you're going to track what you're eating and when you eat in a calorie tracker. There's lots of free calorie trackers out there. Um, you don't have to go and spend money to get to, you know, to get a calorie tracker. Um, so financially don't worry about that. But the reason why we're trying to create, figure out what your calories are is it's hard to know if you're progressing, if you don't know what's actually going on with your body, right? So I can think that I'm eating the same thing every day, right? I can think I'm getting the amount of same calories, but unless I have that evidence, it's really hard for me to know if that's what's going on. Uh, I challenge everybody to set, tell me, tell me, can you tell me what you were eating two weeks ago? Can you tell me what you're eating a week ago? Exactly what you ate in that week. Most people can't. There is that, you know, 1% that basically has, a, has the same thing every day. Sure but most of us can't do that. A calorie tracker is gonna let us know how many calories we're actually bringing in. Because really, when it comes to gaining, maintaining, and losing, it's all about how much calories are we intaking and what our expenditure is. Our expenditure is gonna be through um, just our daily, everyday um, activities, as well as any additional. So if we go to the gym, we're, we're gonna, it's gonna expend more energy. If if, in fact, if we have a stressful day, we're going to expend more energy. Like there are lots of different things that, that are going to create um, a dip and a, sorry, a dip and a peak 
in what how our energy is used. You know, if you don't get enough rest the day before, right, it's going to affect your your any energy expenditure, right? Um, also, it's important to know what your energy is level throughout the day. And so, what I'm trying to do here is, I want you to know how what your body's telling you. A lot of us kind of forget about the cues that our body our body gives us, and it's really important to know what our body's saying to us. So, like, are we? Do we in the morning say we don't eat in the morning? Okay. Do you find that every day at work, two o'clock comes around after you maybe had your first meal, that now you feel tired? right? There's patterns that our body's telling us, right? That we need to be aware of. And a lot of us kind of like, oh, it's just how I am. Yeah, it's how you are. But there are a lot of little things that could have uh, could have got you to where you're at, right? So it's really important to know what your energy is throughout the day. Like, when are you dipping? When are you at your highest? Are you waking up? Like, are you getting the proper amount of sleep that you need, right? These are a lot, a lot of things that we really need to check um, to fix why we're looking at where, where, where our energy levels throughout the day. Um, also, you're going to track your type of fitness. So now when I mean fitness, that means going to the gym. That means going for walks. That means if you do extracurricular activities, which is like maybe um, some sports, maybe you go dancing, whatever. These are the things that these are things that are going to burn off extra energy, right? And if you do these, if these aren't one-off things, or if these are things that you do on a habitual basis, so there, there's a pattern, these are things you need to track, right? Because obviously the days that you're doing this, you're going to be, be expending more energy. And I also wanted to clarify that step one doesn't necessarily mean day one. No. Right, no. right. and I say that because I'm assuming some people might not been tracking their energy prior to booking with you or like, you know, people might come more uh, uncertain when they initially start of recognizing these things. So just wanted to clarify that step one doesn't know. Step, step one is definitely is kind of like that two to three week period, basically, right? That we're trying to figure out what our patterns are, right? Because whether you come to me or whether you do it on by your, uh, whether the the individual does it to themselves, it's really looking and establishing patterns, right? Once we establish patterns, we're, it's, we are able to build a better plan for ourselves. Right. So I'm also curious because I have some clients that they, they either love tracking numbers or numbers terrify them. So I was wondering if there was like a substitution if someone didn't feel comfortable tracking calories is there something else that they could track in substitution? So that's really hard. Okay, so you can go without tracking tracking numbers, but the problem is then there's a lot of guessing work involved, right? It, it, everything is about the data points. So the idea isn't that you're always going to be tracking calories, right? The idea is that you eventually get to the point where you just know how much you're eating your body knows how much you're eating. For instance, right now, I'm on a program myself, right? Um, and I eat a lot of food right now. So a lot of protein, a lot of carbs, a lot of fats, right? I know when my body's just like full, like I'm like, okay, I've had enough, right? So you're, I want you want that person to get to that point where they're like, I know I've had enough. And it's, I mean, when, obviously when you start off day one, that's not where you're gonna be, right? But over time, as you track, as your body gets used to you eating a certain way, especially when you're maintenance, you'll you'll know like, okay, this is how much I need to eat, right? But the first part, it makes it easier when you're tracking calories, so that we know where you're starting from. You don't oh, you don't have to, right? But remember, every data point that we have makes it that much easier for us to get you to reach your goal, right? Okay, and I guess that's where the holistic aspect comes in, accounting for every part of the journey to, to yeah. build upon. Okay. Yeah. All right. So step two is when you're now counting your calories, and this is where it's a little where so this right now, this is so if you were to see me, I give you something more specific than this, right? 
if this is where your what your aim is, right? Um, but this is a kind of a let's call it a skeleton or something that you can take a, as a takeaway that anybody can use and kind of figure out where they're at in their journey, right? What how to get to their how to how to, how for for them to how to reach their goal. Okay, so once we understand what's your maintenance calorie, so maintenance calorie means this: basically, your maintenance is going to be where you where you're eating, and then if you're tracking, you find that your weight doesn't really go up and down. Now your weight can go up and down like maybe one or two pounds, but it basically stays in with that within that range, right? Because you'll notice that typically, if you weigh yourself, if you weigh yourself every morning, right? your weight's going to fluctuate. That's why it's very, very difficult to look at that, that number on the scale and only using that number and figure out what your weight's at. We have to look at a trend. Is the trend that you're going up constantly or are you going down? Because remember, if you go up and you go down, but you're actually going up more, your trend is actually going up, right? But if you find that you're, if you're, dips are always more than your your peaks then obviously your trend's going to go down and this is done over time you can't just you use one day this is something that you're basically tracking yourself every day so i know that there's um some people are scared of the scale right so it's very important to remember that the scale is just another tool it's not the end all be all it's just one tool right what we're trying to do is we're trying to get data. That's all we want. We want data. More data we have, the better that we are prepared to get to reach our goal, right? If we if we look at that scale and we're like, "Oh my gosh, I've uh I haven't lost any weight." Don't I don't want you to think that this is um that this is I don't want to put it lightly. I don't want I don't want you to feel to get down on yourself. The scale like I said, is just really one tool, one tool out of many tools, right? For instance, I can weigh myself, right? My weight state has stayed typical uh, at about 170 for the past month or so, right? I also go to the gym though, right? So I know I'm also eating a lot of food. So now my 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 caloric intake is high right? My weight is staying the same. That means that I'm basically burning more energy, right? Than, than I am, or I'm, I'm burning the same amount of energy as I'm taking in, okay? But when I look at myself in the mirror, right? I'm, all, I, I'm bigger, right? I weigh the same. I, take a, I eat a lot of food. I'm working out. So the idea is this. If you just look at the scale, it's not going to give you everything, right? You can go on the scale and you can be at the gym and you start finding your pants are don't fit uh don't fit the same. They're they're loose. Does that mean you've gained weight? You no, your weights stay the same. Does it like the way the the fact that the the scale stays the same is just one tool. There's all these other of these indicators that we need to look at when when we're talking about like what what is nutrition and fitness doing for you? Do you feel, do you have more energy? Are you sleeping better? Like all these little things that we really have to recognize as opposed to just saying that the scale is the end all be all. I definitely agree with that because I, I have clients as well. We briefly talk about fitness and nutrition because that's not my expertise. Yeah. But, but when I hear they're on their journey, then they would say, you know, that they're gaining weight, right? But when we look at the patterns of their behaviors, their weight gain, yes, numerically it's going up, but the reason it could be they're gaining muscle since they're working out. Yeah. So also even the increase, the interpretation doesn't necessarily mean bad either, but it's understanding what would occur in your journey, right? And, and therefore interpreting the numbers are more accurate than misleading. Yes. So the formula I have here uh, basically kind of states that it it's a good way to figure out a good way to start you on your goal. So the idea is that if you want to if you want to work on losing fat, 
right? You're going to multiply your ideal weight by 12 to 13. So if you are 100 pounds, sorry, if your ideal weight is 100 pounds, you would multiply it by 12 or 13. And the reason why it's 12, 13, because sometimes the, look, the values might be a little low or a little high, right? About the amount of calories. So we're trying to get calories within this range, right? So if I multiply 100 by 12, I'll get 1,200. That's the amount of calories I should be aiming for if I want to lose weight. Mind you, 100 pounds is very, very small, just, just so people know, okay? Like I'm just using this because 100 is a nice whole number and we can understand, right? Um, now, if you want to maintain your weight, you're going to mul multiply your current weight by 14 to 15. Okay? So once again, so I let's say you're 150, um, multiply that by 14. If I'm not, or 14, yeah, 14 by 150, would be about 1,700. So that's about how much ca caloric intake you want to take to maintain that weight, right? And then obviously, if you want to gain weight, it's multiply your current weight by 16 to 17, right? I have a question. Yes. So how do you determine, you said 12 to 13, like you're, you're giving a couple of options. Like how do you determine what number you want to multiply by? Well, the way I look at it is this. If I see that the number looks, okay, for instance, so if I say, we'll take the, the, the 100 pounds, 1,200 is, is a lot. Is not very much food to be at, honest at least to be honest so i'd really go towards the 13 right so 1200 calories is is very small right that's like if you want to look at rda and remember rda is actually like um if you want to think about rda is really what is necessary to kind of like you know to to survive you know to uh, before somebody gets into has health uh health implications and the RDA is, everyone always hears a 2,000 calories. So that's 2,000 calories, though, is based on a male at 175 pounds. That's usually, that's a number, right? So remember this. Most people aren't, like half the population isn't men, first of all, and most of us aren't 175 pounds. You know? So just remember when you hear that 2,000, because I know a lot of people are like, well, what about this 2,000? That's for somebody who's that size, right? So I would say, so if you're smaller, probably you would probably go towards the bigger number if you're trying to lose weight. So now, for instance, if you were 200 pounds, I would probably say probably heading towards a 12 might make more sense because then you're talking about 2,400 calories, right? So, and it's really about tweaking, right? So you'll know how... The idea is that you'll eventually know how much to figure out what your caloric intake should be. Okay. So once again, it's a it's it's a kind of a quick fire guideline, right? Like we can get m way more specific than this, but this is a quick fire guideline that somebody's like, you know what? Let me try this. So I, what I would say to somebody is, if you think that you can get away with eating twelve hundred calories right? And that doesn't bother you, then stick to that, right? But if you're like, well, you know what, 12, I've had this for a couple of days and I'm hungry all the time, then probably go towards 13, right? That, that, that's the way I look at it. It's really more about, uh, what is your body saying? Like, you know, am I feeling hungry? Like, am I exhausted after my workout? And am I even exhausted the next day after my workout kind of thing? Then you probably need to add more calories and as opposed to stick, sticking that 12. And that, that's just if we're using 12 to 13. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I think that, again, goes even back to step one and then really identifying the patterns and learning how to listen to your body to yeah. know what, what makes sense. Um, and of course, just slipping it in here too, that please do schedule with Sean if you do want a more tailored meal plan. Right, because we can ask. I can try to ask questions. I think people might want to know. But if you have your your personalized questions, and that that can only be answered in an appointment. So, 
Um, let's continue. Yeah. So step three is creating the plan. Um, so what I want you to remember is that the plan's made for you, right? Um, so when I say creating the plan, you're actually creating the plan in the sense that I'm not going to write down the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. This is for you because this is about you creating the plan for your schedule, right? Um, so it should be flexible, but it's got to, it should include this. You should have at least three meals and each meal needs to have a protein source with it. Now, I know there's some people who are going to be like, well, I, I, I don't eat breakfast and I only eat lunch and dinner. That's fine. But remember this. For you to hit those goals, you really want to make sure you have protein, right? Getting your fats is easy. Like there's so many foods that have fats in it. And by fats, I don't mean like uh, like bad fats. I'm just like people, lots of foods have fats in it. And we eat a lot, way too many carbs in our society, right? Most people probably eat, I, I would say, probably... 60% of their other diets probably made, made up of carbs, which is a lot. Okay. But if you think about it, carbs are is like all the rice, all the breads, any snacks that you have are carbs, right? You know, so cookies, donuts, those are considered carbs, right? Uh, fruits and vegetables are carbs. Those are good. No complaint of that. I love you having those. But a lot of our diet is made up of carbs. Because if you think of a typical diet, right person wakes up in the morning uh per the, the typical adult um they'll wake up they probably go to work and they might have um some type of sandwich croissant with their coffee to wake up for breakfast to go to work for breakfast right uh, they might have a little protein in there the protein might be egg um they might have cheese i'm like just thinking like somebody goes to like mcdonald's has like a egg croissant or whatever kind of thing, right? That's mainly carbs you're having for your for your for your meal, right? Um so really what we're trying to do is we're trying to get proteins in at the start of the day because proteins are what are very important because one they're going to satiate satiate you through the throughout the day, right? So that satiety that we that we need that that not feeling hunger, not having those cravings is going to come when we're eating protein. Right? Protein is not going to make you fat. Very hard. Like people do not gain gain fat from eating protein, right? In fact, most people can't have a lot of protein. Like if you were to compare, if I were to say have 50 grams, sorry, in one sitting, have 50 grams of protein and have 50 grams of carbs, easy to have 50 grams of carbs. You can probably like shovel that down quickly. Whether you have pastas or whatever, right? 50 grams of carb or 50 grams of protein is a lot for a lot of people, right? And that would probably stop them from wanting to, you'd be like, oh, I'm full. I'm, this is too much. I can't have any more, right? Um, you're also going to include snacks in between meals when you can. Um, and they should also have some type of protein with it. So now by protein sources, what I mean, especially for snacks, you can get that through nuts and seeds, right? Um, you could have like yogurts have, have protein in them, right? Like Greek yogurt, especially, um, not necessarily good for the environment. I understand. But that being said, yogurts, Greek yogurt, good, right? If they don't want to be like, well, I'm not going to have like some meat or something for it. That's fine. There are other sources that you can have, um, that are not animal based, that they can be seeds or, or nuts. So they can be plant based, basically proteins. Um, that you can get so that that can be had with your with your snacks also once again you're having these having these protein with the snacks because once again it's going to keep you full right the idea is that this plan should be done in a way so that you don't have to worry about one craving or grabbing a snack like a snack like going to the 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 convenience machine or whatever the right and like you know put in your dollar your two dollars whatever it costs now to get like you know your whether it's your even your your protein bar or whatever like remember that a lot of stuff um it's better to 
have your snacks already planned ahead of time, you know, that way there's no thinking involved, right? Because once you start thinking, that's when you start getting distractions. And when you get distracted, that's when it's easy to kind of veer off your path, right? So that's what really the plan's really about. It's about creating kind of that, that routine in your day, right? So that you can know, okay, right now this is what I'm going to eat. Um, because your body, and as, as I think I probably talk on even in the next slide, your body wants rhythm in it. It wants, because we, we, we all follow a, the circadian rhythm, right? Circadian rhythm is basically there's times throughout the day our body kind of turns on things and turns off things, right? That's why, that's why it's always suggested that we need rest, right? Because when we're resting, this is when the body has time to kind of clean sorry our when our organs and all our whether our liver kidney can clean out all the stuff in our system and kind of reset our body right when we don't get enough sleep then we're 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 disrupting the circadian rhythm right and that's why sometimes you feel um sluggish or a perfect example is you know like sometimes when you wake up and you have these bags under your eyes right well, that's because your liver didn't get time to detox, right? So sometimes what happens is you get flushed and you get the bags on your eyes because your liver hasn't flushed out the toxins, right? So stuff like that. So we really try to keep to our circadian rhythm. Um, and that's the reason why we want to make sure we're having three meals and having snacks in between, right? And we're going to set them at times that you have it every day around the same time. So if you know you go to work and you get – your lunch hour is at 12 o'clock, then you know that's that's that should be your lunch, right? If you don't want to have breakfast and lunch is going to be your first meal, that lunch time is your, then you have your lunch. And then during your break, you have another another small meal, right? Um, also, the idea is that when you're thinking about protein, you're thinking about 0.8 to 1 gram per pound of your ideal body weight. And this is throughout the day. So, if you're, we'll go back to our, our, our 150, we'll go, go to 150 male. So if he's 150 pounds, he basically wants, um, I won't do the point eight cause I'll probably get it wrong, but we'll see. It's a 40, 40. I think it's like basically see so what other wants a hundred, basically about 130 to 150 grams of protein per day. Okay. And that's divided through the meals. But it's always important, remember, to start off with protein in the morning. I know a lot of people will try to think that um, it's good to do fasted meals, and that's fine if that's what they want to do. But really having protein is really important because what happens also, when you have protein in the start of the day, it will usually help you when it comes to the end of the day. Because the later you start having your feet, your feeding, right, you don't want to basically have carbs because carbs are easy to break down. And then basically when the carbs get broken down, you're going to feel hungry again. And it's going to ca cause a cycle where that by the end of the day you're like, oh man, I'm starved. I'm going to gorge. You don't want to. You don't want to be binging on your on food, right? Because then that's going to disrupt um, your system in the sense that you basically want to have enough food that you never ever want to have enough too much food that you're going to be f over full, right? You want to be at the point where you're like, okay, I'm good. Um. After your protein, your fat should make about 20, 25% of your daily intake. Now, I know people think that fats are bad, right? Fats do not make you fat. I want people to repeat that with me. Anybody who's watching this, say it out loud. Fats do not make you fat. You need fats in your life. Your body needs fats. All the hormones that you know that you make that we need in our system, so our hormones are our messengers that kind of tell the body to turn things on. Are created from fats, right? Dietary cholesterol is not going to get bumped up, or sorry, dietary fats are not going to bump up your cholesterol, right? When you overeat and food gets created as fat and now gets stored, you know, subcutaneously, so in your stomach or wherever, that's going to lead to cholesterol going up, right? But remember, all food eventually gets has to get stored as something. If we don't get if we don't get rid of it through our um, through our urine or our feces, right? Or if we don't burn it off, 
but so it doesn't get turned turned to energy. It gets stored as energy for later on. Okay, all food, whether it's protein, whether it's fats or carbs, and carbs are first thing that's going to get broken down and turned to energy, because that's what they're really there for. Okay, and then the rest is made up of your carbs. So I'm curious, mm -hmm. I guess without getting into more detail, in terms of the services you offer, right? So right now we're talking more about people that want to change their physique, whether it's gain or lose, they want to change their physique. Do you also create meal plans that cater to more optimal functioning of organs, such as a meal plan to help a liver? function uh, better or um, your kidney function better. Do you do those types of things? Definitely I can. I mean, those are, those are, a, depending on where you're, at, where, where you're currently at, that can be done. What I want people to realize is this, is that I know like that this seems like it's like fitness based and people are like, oh, well, I don't really work out. Don't. Remember this, as you get older, your muscles start to um, decrease. They deteriorate, basically. So it's called sarcopenia. It's important that, you know, as we get older, uh, whether you're man or female or man or woman, that you have enough protein, you're eating well, right? Because this is going to let you live a longer, fuller life, right? Like, what, like to be honest with you, we're, we're probably at that, that point in time where all of us are going to live well beyond our parents you know minus you know you know what uh unforeseen circumstances right the question is this that you need to ask yourself how do you want to live it now do you want to live it where every day is painful getting up where um you know you can't enjoy going out with your friends or your senior family right no, you want to live it how you live now, right? And I think I think a lot of us don't realize that. I mean, like right now, I'm almost 50, right? So I see things a little differently than somebody who who's 30, for instance, right? But the problem pro the point is this whether you're 30, 20, or 50, eating well, getting your protein in, being active is gonna help immensely on all fronts right? Being active is just not about, about building your, your skeletal muscle, right? It's about your brain too. Lots of studies out there. You guys can go on PubMed, wherever, and see all the studies that being active is going to help with your brain health, right? The last thing people will ever want to do or is, is to have neuro neurological diseases, so like Alzheimer's, dementia, right? Being active is very important. It's not just about, you know, getting strong, looking big. That's not, that doesn't even, even what it's about. Like it just being stronger is going to help you, right? The number one cause of, 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 of people who are elderly um, having to go to the hospital and being now bedridden is that they fall down, right? They're, they they go, down, go down the stairs. They trip. They're walking outside. They fall down, right? If you have the muscles to stop yourself from falling, that's important. You need that, right? We need muscles in our life because if we don't, then we're at risk for more injury. And as we get older, that's the last thing we that you want. You don't we don't want to be bedridden. We want to be able to enjoy our lives. We work way too hard to, you know, like all the hours that we put in, all the things that we want to do, the places that we want to go. It's the last thing you we really want to do, and I'm, I'm not trying to be um, the bear of bad news. That, that's not what I'm doing. I just I just want to be be realistic in where I'm coming from. These plans aren't just about about you know looking nice at the gym so you can go go to the beach in the summer uh, on your vacation and look look you know make people like oh look look at that person. No, that's not what it's about. I want you to actually be strong, right? I want you to be able to be able to like lift yourself out of bed to be able to pick up your grandkids if you choose if you have kids and your kids have kids you know like those are important things that we we need that we that we need to have to have a full life 
Absolutely. I love the passion, Sean. I'm getting a little too passionate. I apologize. But that, 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 yeah. Fitness for me, like, I really believe muscle is medicine. Yeah. No, it's, it's like they say too, health is wealth, right? Yeah. Like, like, as like as the, you, you could be a millionaire, but if you can't enjoy it, like, what does it matter? Right. 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 I was about to say, as much as we need the currency, it is truly yeah, like, health to, to live it through. Yeah. Like, it, uh, be great to be like you know oh i can you know buy my jet but if somebody has to wheel me around in the in a wheelchair or i'm on or i'm like on ivy in the bed because i need to be you know need to need that way to stay alive right that's that's not the life we want to live man like absolutely absolutely and i must say as well the more you share about yourself like you are truly a walking testimony of what you're speaking you know people say practice what you preach Right. You can tell when someone is embodying a certain lifestyle yeah. when they're taking care of themselves. So and I don't want, uh, listen, th thank you for saying that, Kishan, but I don't want people to think that, you know, that, oh, well, he's a nutritionist and that's what he just loves to do. I can show you pictures a couple months ago where, where, you know, I gained too much weight. I was like, oh my gosh, like there's a lot of weight on me now. Mm -hmm. Like not good weight either. Like, you know, I, mm -hmm. you know, COVID, you know, kids, like, you know, working like all these things stress adds up right Absolutely. and like even me who who knows everything or not knows everything, but knows like you know what is good and what's bad let's put it that way like i can get off the i can i can easily fall off the road too right but the idea is that i have tools and that's what i wanted to, uh, that's what i'm trying to teach people here tools right. to pick myself up so i can get back on the path Right. right. And that, that is the attitude to even bring into such a lifestyle is knowing, as you said before, your, your weight will fluctuate. Right. Um, but being compassionate, being understanding, you are human. The body does change in, in age, it changes in time, it changes in season. Yep. So much changes to, to just uh, allow yourself to be flexible and, and adapt to. Uh, but let's go to the next slide. All right. Um, so good sources of macronutrients. Um, I think a lot of people probably know this, but like for instance, your proteins, you look some meat, you're looking at your chicken, your beef. Um, I would su suggest, I mean, at this point, whether it's lean meat or not lean meat, getting proteins in is good, period. Eggs are considered protein. So if you want more protein, you're having the more white, egg whites. Um, those are a lot of animal proteins. One thing I really want people to know is that protein can also come from legumes. So these are like, for instance, chickpeas and kidney beans and lentils. Um, the problem, not the problem. The only thing there is obviously if you're having, if you're going to have a plant-based or vegan diet, you're going to have to have, consume a lot more um, legumes per se, nuts and seeds to get that level of protein that i'm suggesting okay um it can be done it's just that be aware that you do have, obviously have to consume more like animal meat has a lot more protein in it okay um for carbohydrates you're looking at vegetables that could be fresh or frozen i don't want people thinking that because it's frozen it's not good in fact a lot of places it, what happens is that frozen can be actually better have more nutritional value than than fresh the reason is this: a lot of places will pick their vegetables, and they can then they quickly flash freeze it. So, flash frozen, stored, ready to ship. A lot of our vegetables and our fruits as well get shipped from faraway places, right? They get picked early, and they kind of actually ripen as they're getting transported. Okay, so the nutritional content might not be as good as something that is frozen i would say do whatever your preference is i'm just giving you that the the basis right because let's be honest we're in canada it's winter how much oranges we can't even grow oranges so how many apples do you think we're growing right now none you can't grow apples in winter right so they get stored right yeah they get stored in places so you can go to some farmers markets and the the Niagara region, like farmers and stuff like that, will store apples with it, which they do. Or if you go to the grocery stores, like Loblaws or whatever, more than likely they've shipped it from 
Uh, what are the places? I think Chile's a place that they're shipping from now. Um, but basically Mediterranean countries and probably Mexico or where, where the climate is good, right? Um, also, carbohydrates can be breads, which are kind of like, you know, rye and sourdough. You can also get your carbohydrates or rice. I, I didn't put that down. I apologize. Um, and starches, which would be like sweet potatoes, potatoes, stuff like that. Okay. Uh, for fats, we're looking at kind of olive oil, coconut, avocado. Nuts have a lot. So we're talking pistachios, walnuts, pecans. Um, if you're, for those who are environmentally friendly, uh, those people who don't mind, you can also have almonds, right? Um, then you got seeds, which are pumpkin, sunflower, chia seeds, flax seeds. There's lots of seeds, right? And those fats, some of those fats also have uh, proteins in them. So for instance, like the pumpkin seeds have protein. Um, if you have flax seeds, they have protein. Um, but once again, the amount that you have to have is a lot when you compare it to an animal product. Okay. And then finally, setting up for success. And I think I've kind of stated this kind of in our conversation throughout this presentation. Really important to create a consistent eating pattern. Once again, that goes back to the circadian rhythm, right? Let our body know when the food's coming in. And it it's we really have to look at our body kind of as a machine, a factory per se, right? You know, so we're going to eat at certain times, you know, get our snacks in, go to bed at certain times. We're going to wake up at certain times, right? Um, really what we're trying to do is we're trying to get to that point, And some of you hopefully have where you can wake up and you don't need an alarm clock. Your body just knows this is the time to wake up. You get up and good, right? Um, obviously there are going to be times where you, where you go to bed a little later. That's fine. You know, it's not about, it's not always being about hundred percent perfect because that's not what we're, what, what anybody should be asking of you. But a good rule to fall is kind of the 80, 20. So if you can do it 80% of the time, great. Right. That's what we're trying to do. You're trying to do for the majority of the time and on the off times you don't fall in that pattern. Right. Manage your expectations. This kind of goes along to lines of kind of even the, 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 the scale, right? Don't think that if you're going to start like, you know, that, We'll say you are, I know a lot of people want to talk about fat loss, so we'll talk about weight gain. So people want to put on muscle. Don't think that if you're at 100 pounds that you are going to be 140 pounds at the end of the year, right? Man manage expectation. Create realistic goals that you know or that you strongly feel that you can accomplish, right? When I'm talking about any like fat loss, I'm talking about maybe one to two pounds of fat coming off, right? That doesn't include what, what weight might be gained by the fact that you are also hopefully being active and you're going to gain muscle in some sense, right? But you don't ever want to put to the point where you're, gain, where, where you're losing too much weight because the body will readjust and that's that's probably another co that's a conversation for another time. But know this, that there are reasons why people hit plateaus when they're trying to do when they're on these plans. Um, and the reason is why it's because your body adapts. That's what your that's how our our body is such a unique and wonderful machine that it will adapt to any situation. You, we always have to remember that at one time when we first came, you know, were put on this earth. There weren't times that we had refrigerators, convenience stores, grocery stores. There were times where people had to go through long periods of limited food, right? We had droughts. We had famines. People didn't die off. Some people died, but a lot of us survived, right? And that's because the body has learned to adapt to these times. So realistically, if we were back in... Paleolithic, Paleolithic ages, and it's winter, food would be very scarce. We're not picking any berries, you know. We're not getting grubs or, or uh, roots out of the ground. Like, that stuff's not growing. So know this. Always manage expectations, right? Know that our body is going to adjust if we do anything that is too drastic. 
our body loves to be in a homeostatic homeo homeostasis, right? Where we just like comfortability. We we want our body will always choose to do the thing that causes that uses the least amount of energy. Always. And we probably even see that in our lives sometimes, right? That's why whenever we start something new, for 80% of the people, it's probably a struggle. And then we're like, oh, I don't really want to do this. Oh, because our body hasn't adapted to it yet. Right? It's kind of funny how the body works. Like, if we look at it, look at the whole picture, right? Our nutrition is is no different than us, you know, um, learning how to drive. You know, if you eat a certain way, right? It's kind of like not knowing how to drive, right? So you you don't know how to drive, and then it's scary at first, like, oh, I can't do this. Oh, how am I gonna how am I gonna make a left turn in this busy intersection, right? You just but your body starts learning. You learn this the cues, right? And that's that's really what nutrition is about. It's learning the cues. So that's why we want to manage our expectations. We also want to manage our expectations by the fact that if we know that certain foods are going to tempt us, then try to create an alternative or don't bring that food in. Okay. If we know time is going to be our, our, our stumbling block, then prepare food ahead of time. Right. I'm not saying prepare, you know, 14 meals, you know, on Sunday, manage your expe expectations. If you have two hours, you're like, okay, what can I do in these two hours? Okay. Let me make a sheet of vegetables. I'm just going to roast these vegetables, put them in the oven. Then I'm going to use the stove and I'm going to cook something up on the stove. And then maybe I have, I have a crock pot or a, a Insta pot and I'm going to cook something in that. Right. We have all these tools ahead, like in front of us, usually a lot of us, right? Don't get stuck on that. Oh, well, something's in the oven, so I can't really do anything else for preparing my food. No, find something else that you can do on the stove, right? It, it, it's it's like what we want, what we teach our kids, you know, like there's, there's different ways that we can do things, you know, it's not just one path, right? Um, and then lastly, fitness. Fitness, fitness, fitness. I know, don't do fitness to get strong, like as in, to for like hypertrophy, you know, like like for your big muscles or whatever. Don't you don't have to do fitness. Do fitness so that it can strengthen our mind and our body. Remember this. Most of us are in front of the computer or sitting down for say six hours of the day, work day. Then we come home. And we're tired and we probably either sit down and we go in front of our phone or we go and watch TV, binging Netflix or whatever, Prime. I would love for everybody who's watching this to choose a day, whether maybe after you watch this tomorrow, actually, see how much time you actually spend, spend sitting down, right? How much time do you spend sitting sitting down doing like nothing that's physically taxing that's that's not stressing your system? You'll be very surprised and to see that it's hours upon hours. All right? Fitness, we're asking you to do maybe three times a week. Like when you get to that level, obviously, not right away. If you if you haven't done fitness, and you know, you have to take steps, but you're talking like three times a week, an hour hour and 15 minutes of your time, right? And fitness doesn't have to be you going to the gym. You can go for walks, right? You can um, do some things with your hands. Like it, like you go dancing. I, like there's a lot of different things out there, right? But the, I just really would be interested to know how, how much time people think that they, that they spend sitting down. And you'll be you'll be like, wow, that is a lot of time. 
Absolutely. Thank you, Sean. I think fitness, similar to your previous webinar, it's about movement in general, right? Like yeah. just, just move, do something out of, you know, stillness. Um, I know for myself, if I was to literally write down how many hours I sit, I, I don't want to see that number. <laughs> it's scary. Honestly, I sit a lot too. Like, don't get me wrong. Like if I'm not cooking, right. Then I'm sitting, I'm probably sitting down because I'm like, I'm on my feet a lot. Right. right. But getting in those, getting that time of that movement, that activity is really important. Absolutely. Uh, and not, I also want to say having like a place where you can kind of de-stress is very important. Having that community. So some people it's for the, it's a gym. Um, you know, some people like just belonging to pe or to being in a social group is very, is very important too for your mental health as well. Right. Um, and even like having this meal, like creating a meal plan that works for you. You have to remember that realist, really, really our success is so much easier when you're around people that think the same way. Right. You hear it a lot about wealth, right? You know, you're, you are the average of the four to five people that you, that you associate yourself with. Right. Um, the same can go for health. Like, you know, if you are in a, if you are not, don't belong to a group or you don't have support in the sense that the people around you just want to eat junk food all the time. It's very hard. Like there's, there's, there's social pressures on you. Right. Because nobody wants to be the pariah. No one wants to be like, oh, you're going to have another salad again. Great. Like, right. No one wants to be that. Right. And so it, 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 it makes us feel guilty about wanting to be healthy, which is kind of funny when you think about it. Right. Somebody's going to be like knocking you down because you want to live a better life. And that, that brings the question, I always ask clients at some point of our journey, you know, really question who are you surrounded by? Yes. Right, because as you grow, as you're healing, things will change, your perspective will change, your body will change, and therefore right. people's responses to you can change. Because a lot of people, as you stated in a different context, don't like change, right? Um, so, as you said as well, we like comfortability in various ways. We like comfortability. Um, so question, who are you surrounded by? And knowing that it, it might need to change if people aren't being so encouraging to you and they are challenging yeah. your health. Because at that point, it's not just physical, it's mental. Yeah. Yeah, it's this is there, there's so much to say. And we're talking just nutrition alone can expand to lifestyle, social group, culture, mental health. Um, but regardless, is there any closing remarks you want to say, Sean, by the way, before we close? Um, you know, I'm horrible with closing marks. I, <laughs> I, I apologize. But I would say this, um, like I said, as Cassandra said, if you know, if you are interested in learning more about how to support your, your, your own journey to better health, then contact me, you know, um, we can sit down and have a discussion of where you are in your path and I can give you suggestions. And if you feel that, um, you need more support, then I'm here to, you know, help you, um, as well. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Sean. That That's part of my closing remarks for everyone as well. And truly, thank you for joining. Thank you for watching. Um, continue to ask questions in the comments section. We'll be sure to respond to them. Um, and as Sean mentioned, uh, if you would like to schedule even a consultation to see where you're at, um, as they are complimentary prior to an initial assessment, our information will be in the description so you can contact him directly. Um, thank you. Thank you. I hope everyone learned something. I definitely I'm feeling motivated to okay, what's in my what's in my cabinets? What's in my, what's in my fridge? You know, let me let me see what I can get going on um, a lifestyle shift, right? So thank you again so much, Sean. For your oh, time. definitely. And um I will definitely keep on, you know sharing my information with everybody uh through this um through these lunch lunch and learns um 
Yes. Probably not another few months. Um, or if there's a lot of questions, then maybe I'll do it sooner. But uh, yeah, I'd say look out for me in another few months, and I'll definitely uh, have some more more to share. Hopefully, it's not a repeat of everything I've said, but I mean, it's I think it's important to get the message out there. So, um, yeah, my I, I I'm pretty sure anyone who who's seen this this lunch and the last one I was in knows that I'm pretty my like top thing is fitness and nutrition. Like that's yes. Yeah, I, I want everyone to live a long, full life. Yeah, like, Sandra knows that I've shared this with her. Like, I have parents who are who are struggling right now, yeah. you know, yeah. and it's my journey not to be like that, right? And yeah. I want that for everybody else. Yes, thank you. Par I, I feel like applauding. Honestly, I feel like a, why not? Why not? <laughs> why not? Because you know what? It's. To, to seek a professional that is passionate about his work, not only professionally, but personally is inspiring, right? And, and that's the type of energy, that's the type of person you want part of your care team. So uh, again, everyone contact One Piece Therapy to speak with Sean and I'm sure he'll be happy, more than happy to support you wherever you are at. Um, have a lovely day. Take care. Bye. Bye.